one moment. You give me this. It is the transcription, my transcription. But you are, are modify all the all the finger. Why? Just decisions I made. Do you think that is better what you have found? No. Then why do you play it? I think it's good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. I don't mind. That is for you. And you cut all the portamentos. I am no very rich in portamento myself. I criticize Tarria and Puyol and all his pupils. But there are portamentos that is necessary. The guitar is not a dry instrument. I don't know the many of the all the pupils that are coming to me. Continue. Tarore idaro, eso es, that is expression. It's very ugly that. And then. Well, listen, if you have to play my transcription, play my transcription. Otherwise, go to another, another person that made better competition than I. Fuera. But it's turned out to be an experience of such profundity that, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's hardly even words. I came with an awful lot of confidence in my playing and in my preparation of the music and in my concept of the music. And Segovia, we all have known that he's an incredible artist. But the thing that I didn't know until I got here, until last night, that he is a human being and a pedagogue of such sensitivity to everything that uh, he, he finds a schmuck like me and he knew he knew exactly what to do I mean it, it's it's too unbelievable the way he treated me I'm not quite sure I understand. there's no other way that what I ended up getting out of this class, I would have gotten unless he had handled it the way that he did. I mean, the, the first night I was the first one to play and I wasn't nervous. I just, I, I don't get nervous very often until last night, of course. And so we all sat on the stage and, and he came out and uh, I went up to play. I played the first note, stop. You're out of tune. So I tuned. Started playing again. Still out of tune. Tune some more. Then we're ready to play. I'm still not shook, little. Started playing. Whoa. Tempo. Too fast. Stop. Start again. Stop. Start again. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. I mean, it was like all the preparation that I thought I had put into this piece, it, uh, it just wasn't enough, which of course it wasn't. I mean, here's a man who knew the composer, who lived with the composer while he was writing the piece, who lived with the piece. And, and here I come after playing it for a year and, and thinking that I have even a slight hint of an idea of what it's about. So then the second night was a little worse. I played the second movement and stop, stop, stop. It's, it's no sensitivity, the melody doesn't sing. All these things that I thought I had but you know, he listens to us. He, it, it must 
it must be like like when a, a teacher is teaching first graders how to spell or how to read. I mean, what are they? How are they going to talk to the teacher about Dostoevsky? I mean, he, that's what he hears. There's no question about it. Because when I teach, and I hear a student who's been playing for three or four years, and they're playing and they're very competent, there's still this this uh, you know they just don't know what they're doing at all. And so for a guy like him, you know, we just we must sound so infinitely beginnerish. So the second night, again, disappointment. I, you know, I came here with just the desire to play for Segovia. I never considered would he like me or wouldn't he. It didn't cross my mind. And uh, so I just wanted to play for him. And so I never got to. He stopped me, he stopped me. And I'd go home each night and I'd think, oh, what is wrong? And why is it this working? And then I figured, well, I'll just not play Ponce because he's so close to Ponce. I'll play Mallorca, another piece. I was just so certain I had it. And I had you know, sang it and studied it and fingered it many different ways when I play it. And as the piece develops, I finger it in different positions. And again, thinking that I'd approached it the right way. And so then the legendary third lesson happened. I played the first five notes, stop. Why don't you use my fingerings? Well, I thought that the fingerings I did were good, but to my ears, you know, to the 10-year-old to the artist, the fingerings were good. To Segovia, they weren't quite right. And it must be a little frustrating for him to come to us and be night after night confronted by this, uh, it's not stubbornness, it's just, we don't know what he knows, and we haven't grown up and lived in the same tradition as he, and maybe we haven't studied as much with the same commitment that he has. Well, not maybe, we haven't. At times we do, but, but not, not the same. And so I don't blame him for, for finding it revolting that I wasn't playing his fingerings. You know, we all learn what we learn, and we have to do our own decisions in our practice to find out what works for us. But sometimes, especially when you come to play for them, it would be nice to do a little homework. So, out. He finally hands me the score. Out. He, he said it in Spanish. He was so angry. And so everyone was very uncomfortable. <laughs> of course, not as much as I was. And so I walked back and just sat down and watched the rest of the class. And then I went back to my room and just had no, no idea what to do. Because it seemed to me that no matter what I did, it just, it just wasn't cutting it. And so I practiced and listened and sang and, and did one of those m mega days of practicing where my hands just hurt and I couldn't even play anymore. And so then I just studied the score and sang the score. And then, while all this was happening, the things he was trying to teach us were actually starting to sink in. And then, you know, I was finally broken down to the point that he needed in order to get through, and which was the, the point that I needed in order to listen. And so then, last night, just let me play. And, I don't know, everything's changed.